Hello, this is the first of a series of special bulletins we're going to be doing while the coronavirus crisis is on to help you understand exactly what's happening and also give you all the information that you need. Now, it has to be said that the extent of the lockdown that we are seeing in India is almost unprecedented for any country anywhere in the world at this level of spread of coronavirus. 400 odd official cases. Yes, you could say that perhaps the cases are more than that with more testing. But at this level, the sort of lockdown that we are seeing is massive and governments, both the central and state governments, have been really proactive. And again, that was further extended today. We've seen lockdowns in as many as 17 states, perhaps more than that. We are already seeing no international flights coming into India. And from tomorrow midnight, no flights at all anywhere no domestic flights either so massive lockdown in india which will hopefully prevent the spread of the virus everywhere across the country but the second part of the problem of course is economic while hopefully these lockdowns are going to make sure that people's lives are safe and their health is okay there is of course a concern about the impact on the economy on companies on daily mergers on on people's livelihood and that's uh, one area where I think people are hoping and waiting for the government to announce a series of greater steps and perhaps it's coming there as a task force and we are we're waiting for the government to keep making a lot of announcements on that particular front but today clearly a sense of fear at the stock markets the single biggest crash ever in the Lal Street history 4,000 points down or thereabouts for the Sensex so let's just quickly tell you everything that you really need to know to be informed about the coronavirus and its impact. On a day two chief ministers wrote to the centre seeking shutting down of airports for commercial domestic flights. The Modi government has banned all such flight operations from Wednesday. The ban on domestic flight operations will be effective from midnight of March 24th and will remain in place till March 31st. Airlines have been asked to plan operations so as to land at their destination before 23.59 hours on March 24th. The restrictions shall not apply to cargo carrying flights. Earlier on Monday, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and his West Bengal counterpart Mamta Banerjee had sought complete ban on domestic flights owing to the spread of COVID-19. In its fight against the deadly coronavirus, Maharashtra, which has seen the highest number of COVID-19 cases in India, on Monday imposed a curfew to ensure social distancing, which so far has proved to be an effective measure. While announcing the curfew, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre said, not more than five people can come out on the streets and all district borders have been sealed, while vehicle movement between the districts will be restricted. Essential services will not be included. Thakre said private vehicles and taxi will be allowed with driver and two people, while auto rickshaw will be allowed with driver and one person. Earlier Punjab and Puducherry also imposed curfew. The centre has asked state governments to strictly enforce lockdowns and take legal action against those who violated the restrictions as cases of coronavirus climbed in the country. The centre and state governments had on Sunday decided to completely lock down 80 districts across the country where cases have been reported till March 31st. Senior government officials said there are provisions under the Indian Penal Code to take action against people disobeying lockdown rules under the Epidemic Diseases Act of 1897. Any person disobeying any regulation or order under this act shall be deemed to have committed an offence punishable by a jail term of six months, a fine or both. Death toll in the coronavirus outbreak in India has now reached eight with the passing of a 68-year-old man from the Philippines in a hospital in Mumbai. The man had tested positive for coronavirus and had later recovered from the infection. He had diabetes mellitus and asthma and was later admitted to the hospital on March 13 when he developed acute renal failure and respiratory distress. This is the third death reported from Mumbai in connection with COVID-19. The number of deaths around the world from the novel coronavirus cases stood at 15,189, according to a tally compiled by AFP on Monday. More than 3,41,300 declared cases have been registered in 174 countries and territories since the epidemic first emerged in China in December. The tallies using data collected by AFP offices from national authorities and information from the World Health Organization likely reflects only a fraction of the actual number of infections. Many countries are now only testing cases that require hospitalization. 
The government has decided to include corporates spending on checking coronavirus as part of corporate social responsibility. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs said that corporate spending for various activities related to COVID-19, including promotion of healthcare, preventive healthcare, sanitation, disaster management, would qualify for treatment as CSR. The interpretation of the activities qualifying as CSR for COVID-19 will also be interpreted liberally to prevent red tape from squeezing fund flows. The corporate social responsibility rules make it mandatory for large Indian firms to set aside at least 2% of their average net profit for socially responsible expenditures. Indian equity markets extended the losses to close to a four-year low on Monday tracking weak global peers. The Sensex closed below 26,000, falling over 3,934 points. Similarly, Nifty plunged close to 13% to end the session at 7,610. Axis Bank, Bajaj Finsurf, Indusin Bank, Bajaj Finance and Z Limited were the top five Nifty losers. All stocks in the National Stock Exchange Index were in red. At 3.45 p.m., the Indian rupee was 1.35% down at 76.21 per US dollar.